Today on this old house, some 100-year-old subfloor becomes a pantry door. I'm going to help the next generation of landscapers restore a historic garden. And radiant heating is going to make this garage toasty warm. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice, nice. Here is right on. Family that paints together stays together. Nice job, guys. Where will a slab like this be used? The money's in the detail. Oh, look at that fit. That is beautiful. Ready to get to work? Yeah. Let's go. Hi there. I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to this old house where we are working on this modest home in Newton, Massachusetts for a young couple who's trying to make more room for three generations of their family. Now, the budget is tight, so they're trying to save money wherever they can, and one of those places that they could was here in the dining room. When Tommy and Charlie pulled up the strip oak flooring, they found a subfloor down below that was original to the house and old growth timber, and that gave them an idea. Right here is the new pantry, and you can see it is framed out for what was going to be a pocket door, a door that would be hidden half of the time. But when they found that old growth timber, they had an idea. What if they built a barn door that would be exposed all of the time and the family could enjoy it? Well, that's exactly what Charlie's working on right now in his workshop. Hey, Charlie, how are you? Good, Kevin, how you doing? All right, so this is the stuff you guys found, huh? Oh, I love it. What do you think it is? I think it's old growth pine, and uh, the homeowners want a uh, rough side facing the uh, kitchen. Yeah. And I think these boards are going to be perfect. All right. So what are we doing today? I'm going to finish taking the cut nails out. You want to give me a hand? Yeah, sure. You got some old remnants in there. Let me get some tools. Oh yeah, you can see them all throughout, right? You can. Just give them a good little whack, and then we'll flip them over and pull them out. Probably original cut nails, right? Oh, yeah. Well, these old cut nails held this floor down for a long time. Yeah, that's an old one. Well, these boards have a finish on one side, rough on the other. We want to save the rough side and want to clean up the finish side by taking about a sixteenth off with the thickness planer. We're going to clean these edges up with the joiner. Let's lay these down uh, rough side up. In particular order. How does that look to you? I think that looks great. What do you think? It looks good to me. All right. We're going to put these together with a series of floating tenons. Mm -hmm. We're going to space them about every foot, and then we'll glue them in place. And they'll cut the door to length. All right. I'm going to mark them. I'm going to put the glue in the mortise because I don't want any glue on the edges. And you want to fall away with the tenons? And we'll start tapping them together. Nice and even.
that's it. Let's square up one end of the door and then we'll measure it to cut it. All right, let's cut this door to length. You want to mark it six, seven, and a half. The last thing we have to do is put these top and bottom rails on. We're going to glue them in place and then uh, fasten them with cut nails again. Is that the side you want up there? Yep. Okay. You want to hold this in place while I tag it? Make sure, get it over there. Hang on one second. Yes, that looks pretty good there. That is looking pretty good, Charlie, huh? Not too bad. Looks good. All we need is some exposed hardware for this door to slide on, and we're all done. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Part of our Generation Next program, we are working with technical students from all over the country. Today we're working with horticultural students from Minuteman Tech in Lexington, Mass. The National Park Service has asked for their help in restoring a historic flower bed, and I'm going to give them a hand. So today we're going to be taking these daylily clumps and dividing them, and then we're going to be expanding them down the walkway so that we can fill in more spaces. And to help us out is Roger Cook. Hi. Hey, Roger. How are you? Good. Anyone know why we're dividing these? They're getting too big and they're going to be dead in the middle. There you go. We got the right answer. All right. I usually start by making a cut in the middle. And then I'll take and divide it this way. And once more here. And that usually leaves me with four pieces. And you don't have to baby these. They're one of the toughest plants around. So, how would you do it? Usually what I do is I dig up the entire daylily patch, and then I divide it outside of the hole and then place it where I want it. And like I tell the students, if you go to the garden center and buy one daylily, over time you can eventually place them in other parts of your yard. The great thing about it is when you divide them, you have friends, gardens, you give them some of yours daylilies and it goes over big time. Great idea. You ready to get to work? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. The horticulture profession is actually um, looking for a lot of work right now. I think it has to do a lot with students that don't really want to get dirty. Um, there's a lot of that. A lot of students want to be on the computer and there's nothing wrong with that. We have jobs in horticulture, landscape architecture, design, things like that, um, where you do get to spend a lot of time inside. But there's still um, you know, a rare student that wants to go outside, get dirty, and experience nature and be with science. It looks pretty good. It may be a little deep, so you want to push a little back in. I'm the person who can't just sit in a seat all day to learn. I really love hands-on work and learning about the plants and working in the greenhouse, working on job sites. It's really helpful to actually be able to experience it. Honestly, I really do just like being outside and I like getting dirty and working with plants and you know solving problems whether it be with food or someone wants their yard to look nice. And it's just it's such a big industry and it's just something that it's drawn my attention since I was little. I love working with my hands to be able to see something that's been untouched for such a long time and be able to change it into something beautiful. The students love it. I think they get such a fun experience with us. We get to go off campus a lot. This is a great project. We do a lot of projects like this around the school and around the state and we get to network and they just love it. 
By the time they leave us and graduate and go on to college or a job, they have more certifications than a lot of people that have graduated with a degree in horticulture. Ten years from now, I hope that I'll be the owner of a very successful landscape business, and I want to incorporate landscape design and a little bit of arbor. I'd like to be owning and operating my own tree company and then uh, firefighting on the side, hopefully for the big city of Boston. It makes me feel really proud when we see them come back and what they've done with their lives, and it's just, it's really rewarding. Best job around. And our homeowners here in Newton have always complained that this corner of the living room is cold. Apparently there's always a draft. So Tommy and Charlie are trying to solve the mystery down in the basement. Hey Tommy, hey Charlie. Hey, hey Kevin. Kevin. What do you guys find down here? Well, if you look over here to the right, in behind that wall is the fireplace. Behind this wall? Because that, right. that looks like an original foundation to me. Well it is. So here's the side of the house and here's the front of the house. And for some reason, when they built the foundation, they built this jog right here all the way down to the side of the house and the chimney's behind it. So does that mean that that little nook in there is an addition or do you think this was done on purpose? I don't think it's an addition because this front wall goes all the way across and then returns. Oh, that's weird. All right, so what do you think's causing the cold? Well, first of all, we think there's two things that may be going on. Number one, the chimney in the wintertime, if the damper is open, Cold air will come down that flue and saturate the floor. Right. Well, we solved that problem because we removed the chimney. Yeah. The other issue is, what's behind this wall? Is it a crawl space? Is it an open space? Is there a lot of air coming in? Yeah. What we need to do is open it up and find out what's going on. So when you say open it up, I mean, that's a full rubble stone foundation. What's your plan for getting in there? Just use a jackhammer and make an access hole for us. So you guys like bust it into a vault, huh? Yeah, we're just going to make a little hole so we can get someone can get in there. All right, let's see what you find. All right. All right, so you can really see what's going on right here. This is the old main sill of the house, so that's why it's sitting on this foundation all the way down to the basement. It goes this way and then it returns. Now the fireplace is over there and you can see how they added the front wall right there and return for the fireplace. So that part of the house upstairs was probably an open porch or something like that. So the front door came in you know, across that way. So you came up and entered the house. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. These joists are old, but I don't think they are original. Well, they probably added it shortly after they moved the house over here, and they yep. built the foundation original to match the house. And down here, see holes in the foundation. Those are all letting air in. All those have to get sealed up, and we should get the floor insulated. Yeah, this would be perfect access to get that done. So what are yep. you guys thinking for a solution now that you've seen in there? Well, now that we've made an opening, we can see that we have to make a little more room, make it a little flatter. We can get somebody in there to seal up all those cracks on the foundation. Seal it with, with spray foam? Yeah, we're going to spray the foundation with foam, seal up all the drafts, also spray the underside of the floorboards, and that'll make it nice and tight. Right. Yeah. Now, we still have to leave this open right here right. because if we close it up, it can still get cold. We need some of the residual heat from the basement to get in that space and keep it warm. Homeowners are going to be happy with this fix. No more cold feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Let's open up this hole and make a little more room so we can get somebody in there. Up these stairs is a suite for guests, Joe's parents in particular. And even though it's got a full HVAC system, it is above an unfinished garage. And we want to make sure that the floor to that space is warm and comfortable. So Richard, you'd like to add some heat to the garage, and sure. you've got a couple options. Yeah, thought about all kinds of ways to do it. We, it could have been a blower unit up in the corner. Now we have a heating boiler, could have run hot water through it. Right. Could have been gas, because we have gas, or electric. A lot of people use electric blowers in a garage like this. Mm -hmm. We could have done base wood around the corner. But we are pouring a concrete floor here. It's a perfect candidate for radiant. You know, yeah. it just loves it. Concrete, we can put just mild temperature water in there and heat this place perfectly. But we want to keep the heat inside the building. So we've got insulation here to eliminate the heat from going this way. We also have to think about it under our feet. Right, because it wouldn't want it going right into the ground. Right. 
So historically, we always did it this way. You'd put a vapor barrier down to make sure no moisture came up. Then insulation, either one inch or two inch insulation thick. But then it was always this mesh, the wire mesh. And you'd have to get down your hands and knees and do these zip ties. And that was labor intensive. It would be probably about five or 600 of these things in this size space. Right. So this is a unit. We've shown a version of it before. This is insulation, vapor barrier, and a holding system for the tubing all in one. So all those steps right here right. in this panel. And it just there. It's a two foot by four foot panel. It just snaps together, yep. and, uh, and we snap the tubing in. All right, where do you want to start? So let's get started. You take that one. Let's start in the corner over by the manifold. Here we go. To start the new course, we cut one in half so that we don't have the seams all lining up. Let's go next one. Thank you, sir. Nice to have extra sets of hands on you know, the job site, right? It really is. You know, we've all loved being, being part of this Generation Next thing. You know, you just saw Roger talking at the Votech School. Alex and Zach have been with Byla for what, like six months, mm. but they actually came from the local Votech School too. Yeah. It's great to have them. Boy, it goes in fast. Hey, sweet. So the tubing we're using is a super plastic called PEX. We've used it before. You know, we used it from underneath the floor last year. We've used it everywhere we can. Anywhere yeah, bathrooms, we can. kitchens. Absolutely. So, and this is just a perfect application in concrete. It's a plastic that won't get brittle over time. It doesn't kink readily, too. So same stuff that we put down in the bathrooms That's and right. kitchens? That's right. You want something you can trust in the floor. So the grid system comes in each three inches between each one of these rows is where the tubing is going to snap in. Yeah. So we could make the tubing be what? Three inches on part, you wouldn't do that. Six inches, nine inches. We're going to use 12 inches on center. So up and back on 12 inches. Here we go, boys. So we're going to have about a four inch slab right to about here. And I really love seeing the sheathing or these bends to protect the tubing when it enters the slab. We come up into the manifold and we're good to go. So that means pouring concrete. Right, it's actually the best part of the job. I hate to cover it, but it's the best part of the job. The next step is always satisfying to watch. Mark McCall and his crew come in and lay down a wire mesh over the radiant system. That'll give the concrete some additional strength. And the truck pours about four inches of concrete. Mark's crew works quickly to make sure the pour is consistent. The crew smooths it out, and now we have a heated floor in the garage. So Joe and Liz will have a perfectly warm in-law suite. It's so warm, the in-laws are never going to leave. They never do. <laughs> a new front porch has been framed, the deck is down, and now we've got to resupport the roof. So new columns are going in, and Tommy, the old columns were pretty far gone. Couldn't save them. Yeah, they're wooden columns. They're all rotted. So oh, yeah. Look at falling that. apart. They're saturated. Soaking wet. So those go away. And what have you chosen for a new one? Well, we actually have a polyester resin that's spun. with in, a, in it is fiberglass and marble chips. That thing is heavy. It's heavy. It's also very structural. So it, you can use it as a load-bearing column, or you can use it just as a decorative column. All right. So you got the column, and apparently you got the crew. Yeah, we got one in right over here that's finishing up on the caulking across the bottom. Now what we have to do over here is we want to make sure that the distance from the top of the deck to the underside of the beam is equal all the way across. Three equal columns. Right, so now they're jacking it up just probably a little bit longer than the height of the column. We've already taken a measurement because we have one in. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the columns will be the same measurement. But as far as positioning it, did you guys already hang the plumb bob down? Yep, we got our mark right here. Okay, so they've taken a center point up top, and they've dropped a plumb line down and marked a center point here. So that's going to be uh, locating your base, which it's will then locate, locate your the column. So what you do is you figure out what the base is, you divide it in half in both directions, then you put a mark out. So this would be uh, five and an eighth. So from the center line, you mark five and an eighth over here, five and an eighth over here. Now you know where the base is gonna set. And you do the same thing up top if it's a different size. In this case, it will be because it's a tapered column. All right, we'll cut this column and slide it into place. All right, so now they're getting ready to measure for this column. Now, as I said earlier, they're gonna make all the columns the same length. And it's important that you measure from the center of the column and you wanna make sure that your tape measure is parallel with the column. You don't want it on an angle because you'll get an untrue measurement. 
So he puts his marks close enough so when he makes his cut, he can then eyeball the saw to the next mark while making the cut straight. Because of the polyester resins and the marble chips, we're using a Carveronda masonry blade. There you go. See that? You get a nice clean cut, and it's straight. All right, we're ready to install it. Okay, now we'll never be able to paint or seal underneath the bottom of the column. So what I like to do is just place a piece of self-sealing membrane on the deck first. Just lay that down like that. All right, slide that top cap on. Okay, good. Take it right up there. Okay, now we slide the bottom on. And we just bring it over close to where it's gonna go. Get it in position. Now just shimmy it in. Okay. There you go, slide it over. All right, slide it over, put it on the mark. Right there. Okay, now, are you on the other side there good? Good. Okay, so now we can put a couple of screws in that. Okay, drive that in. Good, and one more. A little more, bring it down a little more. There you go, perfect. Okay, so now, see this gap right here? We want to center the column in that gap. So the bottom will be where it is. Okay, so now you gotta get the top on your pencil lines, the reference lines. I'm gonna let it down, put some pressure on it. Ready? Yep. We're coming down. You got weight on it. I can feel it. Make sure it's tight. Okay, that's good. Now the last thing we have to do over here is caulk this joint right here. I don't want to caulk around the bottom because if any water should get down through the column, it can drain out. All right, let's check this. Good. Those columns are a big improvement, Tommy. Yeah, it's really looking good now. What we need to do is we still need to get all the lattice and the trim work on, get the stairs in place, and then set the railings. And what do we got for next week? Next week, we're going to start roofing. All right, well, until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silver. For this old house. It's a fiberglass, huh? Yeah, it lasts forever. And marble? Marble chips. Next time on This Old House is Roofing 101. All right, so this is a self-sealing membrane right here. There's a couple of different types out there. This one has a granule on it. That allows you to walk on it, but it also allows it to stay out in the sun. We bury a mold problem under four inches of concrete. Tin knocking time here at the project, which means ductwork's going in. That's next time on This Old House. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.